Good, how are you? Good. Glad to be here. First time in LA? Ever. Yeah. Ever. Ever. How does it feel to, to be here and uh, to be calling this home now? It feels great. You know, um, you know, the weather's great, but just the people I've met, you know, some of the players, some of the coaches, uh, Coach Staley, they're just really good people. And uh, I can tell that you know, building a culture here that Excellence on the field, but also excellent people as well. Yeah, is there anybody, uh, either players or coaches here, that you have any background with? Are you familiar with from anybody? Or, you know? uh, not, not particularly. Uh, kind of a coincidence, though. I, I met with Coach Nugent uh, at the Senior Bowl when he was with the Saints, and then I met with him again when he was with the Chargers. That's kind of a funny coincidence. But other than that, no, uh, no, there's no one I've known from prior history. Did you play against Chris Rump in, in college? Uh, Chris Rump, yes, yes I, I did. did. I did play against Chris, Chris Rump uh, last year when I played left tackle. He was one of the ends, him and D, and D McKay. Yeah. So yeah. Who? Uh, what players have you met today? And I did play against Asante Samuel too. Yeah. 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 What? Uh, who have you met today? What, what teammates? Um, so far? So it's all been passing, okay. so there haven't really been you know, formal introductions. But uh, you know, a few guys just came by and said hi to me. Didn't actually say their name. <laughs> 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 they said hello to me, and uh, that was cool. But I look forward to you know meeting everyone formally, and um, that would be awesome. Uh, you know, got to meet Coach Nugent, uh, whom I've met before, but just to see him here, uh, you know, is a good thing. And then. Coach Daly, who I met at, at the combine, I see him again in school, and uh, you know, talk to Mr. Spanos was awesome, and you know, it's, it's a nice, nice facility here, and it's great to be in LA for, for the first time ever for me. So. Talk about your your night last night. Share with us what you can about your night, how your night went after you got drafted. You did you go to dinner with your family? I'm assuming, and kind of how that night transpired to bring you here to this day today. So honestly, after I got drafted, you know. Did some media stuff, but I, after that, you know, I went to the draft party for the Chargers, and it was great to see all the fans. Um, you know, they were pumped, and it was cool to see how excited they were. Um, took some pictures with them, and uh, you know, that was really cool. And afterwards, I went back to the hotel to see my family, but you know, we we hung out for about you know 30 minutes or so in the lobby, but we we're all spent. <laughs> so I went I went back to the room thinking I was going to crash, but ended up not sleeping at all because I was so excited. So, um, you know, it's, it's been so exciting, not just for me, but for my whole family and, uh, you know, my head coach and everyone who was involved. Yeah. Last night, uh, before, or right, we finished talking with you, um, you were saying, like, oh, my sorry, my phone wasn't blowing up. Do you know how many like, phone calls and text messages you received since you were drafted? A lot of text messages. Uh, I put the over or under at 100. <laughs> but uh, a lot of a lot of text messages, um, and it's been good. Just people who've helped me throughout the way, you know, people who are you know may not be family, but are family pretty much. Um, it's been good to you know talk to everyone, and you know, just awesome knowing that people that were a part of your journey are so proud of you. Are you a reply right away guy, or are you gonna get to this later? So I'm a I'm a reply right away guy, but I'll send like the reaction thing where you can like click and like love the post or like the post and then then I'll go back later and do a, a formal response but you gotta like if someone sees you just saw it and then you forget later on that's pretty bad too. I'm sure the reader sees that. <laughs> <laughs> then, then what are you trying to hide? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zion, you mentioned before in an interview that a bus driver got you into football. Is that how it came about? That, that, was, that was definitely part of it. It was really him and my mom. So he was the one who mentioned it first. I would ride the bus home after golf practice, and he he said, "Hey, you know, why don't you try out football?" And you know, I was on the fence with it. You know, I kind of went back and forth for a while because I hadn't played. You know, I was undersized, and I didn't really know a lot about the ins and outs of you know, being a football player. Um, but it was really my mom who pushed me to play. Um, you know, she always taught me, you know, you should try things, and you don't have regrets later on in life. And I'm glad I tried football because. Uh, that would definitely be a regret I had because, you know, I love the game and, you know, it wouldn't be another sport I want to play. And uh, thank you.
say my junior team into a Christian Derrissaw, right? Yeah. We, glad. we actually had uh, quite a few guys that have had the opportunity to get drafted. But, you know, me and Christian were pretty close in high school because our old line coach would have us over the house. You know, we like to have like a, a, a family between our offensive linemen where we go and eat and have cookouts at his house and sort of thing. But, uh, you know, with the board of Virginia Tech, you know, we weren't able to stay as close because it's like, you know, I want to beat you. But, uh, you know, uh, he's definitely someone who has pushed me, especially in high school and throughout my career, because, you know, with his level of play, I've always wanted to, you know, <laughs> outdo him as kind of like a rival sort of thing. So. Zion, who's been the, the most influential person to you in, in your journey to, to get into the NFL? Absolutely, my mother. You know, uh, kind of what I said about her pushing me to play football, but just the model that she uh, left for me growing up. You know, she was always someone who worked hard, you know, whether it be in her career or, you know, she was a student athlete um, and her doing that. And a lot of the qualities she taught me has made me the person I am today. Did your mom play basketball? Yeah. She did. She uh, played power forward and center for Virginia Tech and uh, had a lot of rebounds. At one point she was, uh, you know, she, she had records for rebounding, but I think now, you know, they get a lot more rebounds now. The girls are like set, set, almost seven feet tall. So <laughs> uh, her records might be down down the chart a little bit, but you know she she had quite a career. And uh, how much of your athletic ability comes from her? I think most of it <laughs> definitely comes from her because you know she was definitely a force to develop. What did you take off uh, before football? So I would spend the summers uh, with my grandparents in Virginia. Um, and my grandmother is the principal of a school in, in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. And I would go and spend time with the school and they had little camps, you know, tennis and golf and all these different camps. And I, I did the golf one and, you know, kind of enjoyed it as a kid and just, you know, kept playing. I, I made the high school team when I was in middle school and then, you know, it just kept going from there. And understand you picked up the game of football kind of late, but who are some of the people that you patterned your game after or who you looked at to kind of get better at your game? Okay, so I'll, I'll split this in two. So the guy that I watched the most, I didn't really pattern my game after him because, you know, we're not similar in dimensions. It's Tyron Smith. That's uh, that's the reason why I wear, I wear 77. You know, he's a great player. And, you know, I used to spend time watching the, the 2014 or 2015 Cowboys camp practices, uh, it was a joint practice between them and the Rams, and I don't think he got beat once. Like, it, it was amazing, and that, that really gave me a goal to strive for. And the guys I really watched and patterned my game after is Roger Saffold and Lincoln Tomlinson. You know, two guys that are in slightly different offenses, um, and you know, I like him for different reasons. Uh, Lincoln, a lot of what he does in, in the wide zone, you know, we did that a lot recently at Boston College. Uh, just seeing uh, the little things he does in the wide zone is something that you know I like to watch, and then Roger Sappho, just the overall physicality, you know how he gets up to linebackers, uh, and just the power he plays with the physicality is something I respect. Did your game closer to Roger Sappho? If, if, if I understand you saying that, um, I think so. But um, when I when I talk with some of my coaches at Boston College, some of them disagree. Some of them think of it a little more late. But either one, it would be. It says in your bio, you're a cybersecurity. You're going for your master's degree in cybersecurity. I got it. Oh, you got it. Oh, okay. yeah. Just what made you choose that? So I graduated uh, in 2020 from Boston College, my undergrad in computer science. And when I decided to go back, you know, a part of that was seeing what program I wanted to get into. And in the Woods College, the one program that made sense for me was cybersecurity. It kind of meshed well with computer science to where I could kind of go into more of the hacking routes and, uh, you know, take some classes that others weren't able to because of my background. And, you know, it, it ended up being a really fun topic and something that, you know, I'm glad I, I ended up majoring. Just kind of, it's been in the news the past couple of years. What's it been like kind of seeing the explosion in the field? I mean, it's, it's definitely crazy. You know, when I first started taking the class, it's, it's so interesting because the terms are so new. You know, what you consider like espionage or cyber terrorism, you know, those are very loaded terms where, you know, a lot goes into that. And where one person might think it's, you know, espionage, which, you know, may be 
allowed in certain, certain circumstances. Another person may see it as terrorism. And, you know, it, as much, uh, you know, of a technical uh, subject as it is, it's also very uh, intertwined in law because international law plays a big part in what we consider, you know, cyber terrorism, cyber espionage, you know, hacking and what's allowed and what's not. When did you get your master's? I got my master's last uh, fall, so fall 2021. So if you, have you studied, continue to study beyond that? Or do you have another, do you want to keep going? And um, I have, I didn't take classes in the spring. It really is just for me, you know, wanting to do the best throughout the process, you know, want to do the best at senior role in the combine, but I keep up with the subjects, you know, I still program, you know, it's something I do in my spare time, but really like football is my love, so that's the main thing that, you know, I focus on now. What, is, what languages do you code in? I mean, I've used a lot of different languages, so, you know, Java, um, you know, JavaScript, uh, you know, Python, uh, HTML, CSS, you know, I use, I've used Webpack before to make websites. You know, there's just tons of different things I've done. And honestly, when you learn one language, it's not that hard to learn a new one because there's a lot of similarities and things you can pick up on after you learn the first one. I think that would be an advantage coming here because you know football languages are kind of universal or what's the one thing you can be something or another. Absolutely. And similarly, I've been in four different offenses. And I think for me, you know, the more I learn, uh, in, the, in those different offenses, the easier it was for me each year to pick up on something new. Just because, you know, a lot of times you're doing something similar with, with slight tweaks, but someone might call it something different. But just being able to pick on those, pick up on those little differences can go a long way. Going back to your time at Davidson, and, you know, how that ended in entering the transfer portal, can you just walk us through, like, sort of what your mindset was during that time, what happened there, and sort of, you know, how serendipitous it was serendipitous it was that you, you know, ended up at Boston College? So honestly, I mean, Davidson was an awesome experience. You know, I, I like the people there, but I wasn't on full scholarship and there was a level of financial strain with my family that, you know, I, I didn't want that to happen anymore. So I decided to go to the portal. This was like the first year the portal was really a thing. And it was only really a line of communication between you and the coaches. So I went in the portal uh, got interest from you know a few schools, but Boston College, you know, was really the clear choice for me. You know, the love of school, my connection with Coach Troutwine, and their history of offensive linemen, so that just sold it to me. So I said you were surprised uh, yesterday when you got picked by the Chargers. You were like in a good conversation. What was going on during that moment? What were you talking to? So I was sitting. So first of all, let me explain this. There's a prospect chair that you're supposed to sit in so they can get the camera angles and everything. Walked around a little bit, sat on the couch, uh, talked with uh, my head coach, Coach Hapley, and my agent. And we're just talking about some things going on. I think, you know, a trade just happened or something. And next thing I know, I get a call and the caller ID says Chargers football. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. And I answer the phone and, you know, it's the call. And everyone's like quiet. They have no idea who I'm talking to. And then all I say is, thank you, Mr. Spanos. And they're all like, it's the Chargers, yeah. <laughs> it's like going crazy. Uh, but it was really, a, it was really a crazy moment. And uh, it, it was a surprise because, you know, it was like whiplash in my mind because I'm talking about, you know, what just happened in the draft. And I'm talking about, okay, hopefully, you know, I go soon and boom, it happens right there. Yeah. What did you know about the Chargers before you got drafted by the Chargers? Um, I mean, I'm a fan of football, so I know like some of the past teams, you know, Philip Rivers at quarterback and, uh, you know, those sort of things. And of course, I know the high powered offense now, uh, you know, great running back and Austin Eckler and receivers and, uh, you know, uh, the, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm blanking for a second. Freaking uh, Keenan Allen. Yeah, Keenan Allen and Mike, Mike Williams. Williams. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Rashawn Slater and, uh, you know, good to the great center and Corey Lindsley, you know, older guy in the vet who hopefully I can learn from. And then, you know, can't not mention Justin Herbert, you know, guy who likes it. You know, of course, you know, I knew all that. I saw it last year. You know, saw the shootouts that the Chargers had been in. And, you know, I'm excited to, you know, hopefully be a piece of that offense and, you know, work hard to, you know, earn my right to be a Charger, like I said. For LA being a place you've never been to before, what? Came to mind when you thought, oh gosh, this is going to be one of the most 
it's when I saw what I've seen on TV. <laughs> when I was when I was driving uh, from LAX, I was like, it kind of does look like LA on TV. You know, with palm trees and you know, there's like this certain lighting that's in LA. It's like this vibe. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it looks like LA on TV, like one of the uh, like cop shows. Like, you know, like you know, like a NCIS in, in LA or something like that. Like from one of those shows, basically. How much did work and what, how much did you work with Nugent at the Senior Bowl, and how much do you think it will help him in the choice to work with him a little bit? So I met with him at the Senior Bowl. Uh, you know, we had an interview, and I got to talk with him. You know, while he was at the Saints, uh, go over some of the things he believes, and um, you know, I met with him one, again at the combine, like I said, when he was a Charger at that point, and uh, you know, uh, just talking with him and. Uh, hearing some of the things he likes in terms of technique and you know what he believes in as a room you know it feels like for me you know what better room would i want to be in you know clearly building something that's special was that first year in high school guy and started playing football i guess uh describe yourself as a player i think you were saying a little bit undersized and how helpful was the coaches in high school oh yeah undersized is an understatement i was 225 pounds and i played right tackle so and our team played uh Chase Young, so it wasn't like it wasn't like we were playing scrubs or anything. But uh, really, for me at that point, I wanted to play football. I wanted to prove that I could be a good football player. So, you know, being undersized, I just kind of had to strain on every play and just you know try not to give up a sack or you know strain to just get my guy out the way just a little bit. But once I got to college and you know really had the resources to develop my body and gain weight, um, you know that really helped me. The academics is really what got me there. You know, I had a pretty good GPA in, in high school, and that opened the door for me to be able to start to take it. I think one of your coaches at Pete said uh, you were trying to play tight end, so you prefer, if you want to run on the whole line, is that correct? Yeah, Coach Mack. So our offensive coordinator uh, mentioned to me that you know he wanted to see how I could do at tight end, and you know that was something I kind of explored for a little bit, but really the team wanted me to play right tackle, so I played right tackle. Things turned out good, I'd say. You guys good? Yeah.